guys in this video we're going to be talking about some of the auto layout concepts that i go over in my course and i felt like this would be helpful to the community as well and i'm pretty sure most of you will learn something new even if it's just like one thing from this video that you perhaps did not know about auto layout so let's go one by one so imagine you have avatars like these and if you actually wanted to overlap them on top of one another i think a lot of you might not already know how to do this but if you don't know about them you can just apply a negative spacing in between these objects so you cannot apply a negative padding but you can apply a negative spacing in between and then you have these at items overlapping one another additionally if you wanted the first one to overlap the other ones not the other way around which is the last one overlapping right now you can go to this option and you can say i want the first one to overlap on canvas stacking and then you're going to have the first one overlapping similarly let's talk about absolute positioning figma introduced absolute positioning quite a while back and but i still don't see a lot of people using it so we have a notification bell button here i'm just going to make it a component and then I'm just gonna go here and I'm gonna apply like, let's say a different number here. Now, a lot of people don't really know how to use absolute positioning correctly. They just go here, they click this button and then they say, hey, I wanna place it here somewhere and then they think it's looking good, but they don't actually explore why it's not working on larger sizes, let's say, and then they make mistakes like these. Well, when you work with absolute positioning and when you convert something in an auto layout to absolute positioning, you also have to set the constraints. Now constraints, define where this particular element is going to be so if you want it to be fixed to the right you need to go ahead and do that and you want it fixed to the top well that's already done but if you didn't you can change that as well similarly when talking about canvas stacking which we talked about previously as well that usually helps when you have drop downs or elements that are positioned absolutely within other elements so we have a drop down here it has a list item now as you can see this list item is actually falling behind some of the other items, but I want it to overlap on top of them. I can just go to the canvas stacking options and I can say the first one is going to be on the top. So now the list of the first drop down is actually going to overlap some of the other ones. So I have a packed layout here. Now, if I wanted to change this packed layout to a space in between, how would I do that? Well, normally I've seen a lot of people just go here and then choose this, like how many, how many seconds did that particular thing waste? I mean, I don't want experts and professionals to actually do this and I don't want to see this ever again. If you don't want to waste that much time and you want to act like a professional, you can just go here and type A and that's going to give a, a spacing in between these elements. But much better is actually just clicking here and pressing X. That's it. Click here, press X. If you press X, it's going to convert or it's going to toggle between packed and space in between. If I press X again, as you can see, it's now going to be packed again. Similarly, if I wanted to reposition them, I'm not going to click here to do that. I'm, I'm just going to use my arrow keys. So I can use my arrow keys to de define where exactly do I want these elements to sit. But you can also click as well. That's fine. But just a tip. However, I definitely don't want you to go into this drop down and change the packed and space in between from here. So coming to the last thing that I want, to, I want you to know about in this video is fill container and hug content. If I ask you, if I wanted to make this particular element, which is a fill, a hug content, how would you do that? Again, I see a lot of people making these mistakes. They go into this particular dropdown and then they find this option and click on it. Well, if you just have to make one element a hug content, why don't you just, let's say, double click it at the edge. If you double click it, it's going to be hug content by default. If I now wanted to make this fill container again, I can just press option or alt and double click it again. It's going to be fill container. Save these few seconds. These few seconds pile up when you're working with auto layout. Obviously, you have tons of auto layout elements. You're working with them day and night. A few seconds saved just performing really simple functions are going to scale to minutes and hours perhaps in your overall workflow. Now, if you want other tips and tricks like these, if you want to improve as a designer, if you want to master auto layout, components, prototyping, you name it, master Figma, you definitely need to join my Figma Noob to Pro course, a paid course that I recently introduced, which covers a lot of things in details and it's gonna take you to the next level of being a designer. And you can find a link to that particular course in the description of the video itself. But wait, there's more. If you actually subscribe right now, you can subscribe using the EM subscriber voucher code that's gonna be on the screen as well. And you can get a 50% off on the course. This is a special discount for some of, some of my viewers and subscribers, so definitely do check that out. But wait again, <laughs> wait again. 
You also get access to an exclusive Discord community where I and some of my team members are going to be there that are going to help you in your day-to-day -day challenges. Perhaps you're working on a job, you don't understand how to do something. We are going to be there to help you. Perhaps you actually want to scale your freelancing career and you want to take it to the next level. Like, as you know, like I'm an expert vetted talent on Upwork. I have my own agency, a freelancing agency as well. So I definitely do know the ins and outs of the business. So if you need any help on that front as well, we're still going to have your back. We're going to help you improve as a freelancer as well and be successful at that. So if you want to take your design career to the next level, definitely do purchase the Figma Noob 2 Pro course. Do join the community. I'm also planning on launching an exclusive premium freelancing course, which is not just going to be like videos and stuff. It's actually us and me and my team actually helping you set up a great profile, making sure you know how to talk to clients, making sure you know how to write cover letters, making you making sure you know how to market your skills and grab clients. So if you're interested in all of that, you need to join the Discord community that I have. Additionally, you're also going to get to ask questions directly to me. And we're also going to be doing perhaps like a session every week on YouTube where I answer any questions that you have.